Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, and you're watching Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, and it is another brand new episode of Who's That Cosplayer? And joining me on today's episode is cosplayer, RV Cosplay. RV, how are you doing today? Doing good, man, doing good. Hey, that is good to hear, man. I am really excited that we're doing this interview. I'm always excited whenever I interview a cosplayer, because you know your boy, I'm either interviewing people here on Who's That Cosplayer, or I'm going to the con with my team and we're interviewing cosplayers there. And, you know, I'm really happy that, you know, I started Who's That Cosplayer because this opened so many doors for me, like, you know, meeting mm -hmm. people like you and meeting people at the cons and stuff like that. And, you know, just letting everybody share their story. So RV, thank you so much for joining me, man. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, having me on your show. Yeah, you're welcome, man. So before we get into today's interview, First, I want to shout out Roroni Alley because she had shared you and her stories and she shared your shape um, that ah, you're saying space pod, which was just in the slideshow in the background. <laughs> so uh, make sure that you go and you follow Roroni Alley. Uh, I interviewed her. Her interview is here on the channel and uh, check it out. So before we get into today's interview, make sure that you like this video, you subscribe to the channel and you hit that bell button. So that way you're always notified when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And as D always says, podcast link down in the description, like, follow, subscribe. So let's go ahead and get into this interview. So RV, the first question that I always ask everybody up here on Who's That Cosplayer, or if it's on my podcast, is what is your origin story? Every hero or villain has one. So tell everybody who RV Cosplay is. Oh, man. Uh, I started going to cons in 2013. And ever since that that con, I've just been loving it. I've been going every year. And 2016, I think it was my first time uh, actually cosplaying. And it nice. was in uh, New York Comic Con. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And when you went to the con in 2016, who did you cosplay as? Oh, man. Uh, that one was Black Suit Spider-Man. Oh, nice, 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 mm -hmm. nice. Now, which which version of the black suit, like the original, like black suit or the Spider Man Three Sam Raimi black suit? Uh, not not that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the original, the symbiote. Nice man. Hey, that's it's it's hard when it comes to favorite Spider Man suits because like mm -hmm. there are just so many out there, but. My favorite Spider-Man suit will always be the armored version where it was the metallic Ooh. silver. That's my I, I actually have both of those uh action figures. Oh not, hey, 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 show everybody. Yeah, I gotta see this. I love it when people show off their their collection, man. It's always awesome. Yeah, hey, because you know every time when y'all watching me, I got the collection right here in the background. I got Izuku Midori right over there, and he's always watching over me from right there. Then he's always up there watching over me as well. Yeah, right. there's the, uh, the symbiote. I got two of them. The animated series, nice. Yep. Yeah. And then, whoo, the metallic. Uh, hey, y'all see that still in the package, man. Hey, did now have you had those all your life, or did you get those at a con? No, no, these just re released uh, about a month ago. Nice. That's, real, that's awesome, man. Yeah, because I'm telling you right now, if I got those as a kid, I probably wouldn't even have them anymore. They'd probably be somewhere over my grandma. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, same here. Yeah, but that's awesome. And yeah, the metallic suit is my favorite one. And, you mm -hmm. know, I know that there's been more that have come out over the years and whatnot, but it's just something about that metallic suit. And, of course, the black symbiote suit that I always yeah. love. That, those now, those you... two are actually my favorites. There's a yeah. there's a cosplayer that actually 3D printed the whole suit. Oh wow! Nice. Yeah. Nice man. That's awesome. So, are you excited now? I don't want to get into spoilers if you haven't seen it, but you know, knowing that you're a huge Spider-Man fan, I'm sure that you've seen Spider-Man No Way Home. Oh yeah. Oh okay, yeah. Okay. Now, hey, are you looking forward to seeing the black suit in the live action Spider-Man movies with uh, your boy Tom Holland? Yeah. Bro, I cannot wait, man. And I, I just wonder, like, is this going to open the door for us to finally see Spider-Man versus Venom? Or is this just going to be some, you know, he has the black suit now and they're going to do their own version. Like, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, I, to be honest with you, don't know because it, it's it's kind of weird how they made the Venom movie. It was like, 
you know, you got Tom Hardy that he went to San Francisco and it's like, it's not even the whole story, you know, it's like, you know, he was uh, working with Peter Parker and, you know, they had their little rivalry and then, you know, Peter Parker had the symbiote and then he, you know, he took it off and then he went to Eddie. But yeah. this, this version, like, it, it's weird because like the very beginning of Venom, you know, you see the spaceship crashes. Kind of like how it happened in, in the animated series. Yeah. But it was just like, okay, that, that really, you know, you hit that point. But once, you know, no Peter Parker and, you know, that that, that kind of threw me off. And I was like, eh, okay. I th- It could have been better if they had had it with Tom Holland and then just let it go off on its own. But mm-hmm. You know, Sony. Ooh. Sony does its weird things, and it's like, yeah, you, know, you guys need to get that those rights back to Marvel. Hey, you know what's crazy, man? I just thought of something that I didn't think about when I reviewed Spider-Man: No Way Home, and something that I never even talked with anybody about, and it's gonna finally be said up here on Who's That Cosplayer? <laughs> so, because we know in the movie that there are different uh, universes and whatnot, right? Mm-hmm. We had three different Peter Parkers, so. What's there to say that there's an Eddie Brock in the MCU universe, right? And then Tom, uh, Peter Parker in that universe, of course, you know, he needs a job now. He ends up working at the Daily Bugle mm-hmm. and he gets the symbiote. And then there's an Eddie Brock in that universe. You know, I mean, so they can still do it. I, I you know, I never thought about that, but I think that that's what's going to happen, man. I feel like it has to happen. Uh, it, who knows? Who, who knows? knows? And then also, too, I mean, since Venom is Sony and because of seeing uh, Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man again and, like, people want to see him as Spider-Man again, for all we know, Venom and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man could be in the same universe. That, that too. That you too, know what I'm man. So I, I'm, I'm mad I never thought about this. I, I feel like at the time, like, I was just so hyped for the movie. And then now you got Multiverse of Madness coming out and... You know, I just saw some yeah. pictures earlier of uh, they showed uh, Professor X's yellow. Ho- I was just like, "Yo, bro!" Oh I, yes, I, well, I was driving home. I saw movie. something, and then I think I saw um, Captain Carter's shield. Yeah, uh huh. And yep. I was like, "Wait, what, what?" I'm like, "I'm lost. I, I didn't see that part." I'm like, yeah, "Hold bro. up!" <laughs> I'm so excited, man. But you know, going back to cosplay because we could talk for hours about like stuff oh, yeah, that's yeah. going on in the MCU and whatnot. But going back to cosplay, something that I love about like, you know, when I was putting the slideshow together and, you know, just looking at all of the costumes that you've done, like you have some amazing cosplays. I love how you did costumes that have combined, you know, different characters from different series. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, seeing, uh, I want to say it was a combination of Bardock and the Green Ranger. You know what I'm saying? I I really enjoyed that. And (laughs) I also saw the cosplay that you did. I wished it, I hope that it pops up on the screen, but it was the uh, Shredder as the Green Ranger. And I know that they came out with the toy line for that, but just seeing your cosplay for that, is that, no, that's not it. Is that it? Oh yeah, it is. Okay, I'm hyped, all right. But no, I I just think that it's cool. So, you know, what is it that you know made you love Power Rangers so much? Like, did that love come from you know when you were a kid, and then when you became an adult, you was just like, "Hey, I'm cosplaying now. You know, I'm gonna do this because I've seen your White Ranger, the Green Ranger, the Black Ranger. I've also seen the suits for the Red and Blue. So let's talk about mm-hmm. Power Rangers a little bit. Growing up, I mean, I, I was born in '84, so I grew up in the '90s, and one of the things that I love was. You know, X Men, um, Power Rangers, all the good stuff that we had back in the day. And you know, as I got older and I got adult money, mm-hmm. I was like, I want that, I want that, and I want that. And a lot of the stuff that I got was from um, on Facebook Market, mm-hmm. like the uh, the White Ranger helmet and shield. This guy that lives here in Orlando was like, I'm selling it. And I, the minute that I saw it, I was like, how much you want? And where do you want to meet at? Uh-huh. And he was like, oh, okay. Uh, I want this. And he was like, where where are you at? I'm like, I'm by the airport, you know, Cimarron in Orlando, Florida. And he's like, oh, okay. 
let's meet up at the um, Fashion Square Mall. And I was like, okay. And we met up. I gave him the money. I tried on everything. Everything fit. And I was like, okay, have a good one. And that was what? Almost six years now? Yeah, six years. Yeah, that, that's awesome, man. And like, I mean, I love how you said you get that adult money because hey, that, adult, that adult money, it comes in handy when it comes to, you know, doing you know, these cosplays and getting these costumes and whatnot, man. And, you know, I always love when it comes to cosplay and, you know, being able to cosplay characters that you grew up watching on TV, like you did Spider-Man. And right now mm -hmm. you're cosplaying as Vegeta. And, yep. you know, it's just, it's just awesome that, you know, we live in a world where we can do this, especially now, because you said that you were born in 84. And, you know, growing up being a nerd in the 90s, it wasn't so cool, but it's just like now in today's world, it's just like, it's more it's accepting. Open. And yeah, it's open. Like you see everybody and you're like, yeah, you know, it's awesome, you know? Mm -hmm. So now let me ask you, what have been some of your favorite costumes that you've done over the years? Oh, oh man. Uh, geez, I can't, I, I can't pick one because, I mean, I love them all. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it could be my Vegeta, the Bardock, or um, the White Ranger, the Green Ranger, um, the Shredder. Is, I think more will be like the Green Ranger Shredder. Yeah. But I haven't, I haven't done this one yet here in Orlando. The, the last time I wore this was Kamehacon last year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now that I have the same pod, you know, it, the, the theme is more better now. And it's yeah. like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, I, uh, when I was looking through your Instagram, I saw that you had met Linda Young and yeah. Linda yeah. Young. She is such an amazing woman. Her birthday just Her, passed. Yep. too. Yep. And, hey. You know, Linda Young, she's a friend of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. You can check out her interview either on our podcast or you can watch the video up here on YouTube. And uh, if uh, you follow her on social media, send her a message and tell her happy birthday because she's a very sweet woman and very, she's really, very she's wonderful. really awesome. Really awesome. Yeah, very and, wonderful. And, she, you know, she'll do the voice for you. Uh, and I was just like, like I, I've met her three times already. Last year was my first time. Mm -hmm. where we presented the, the the Namekian balls to her. And then last year in November, I saw her and she was like, you look familiar. And I was like, yeah, I met you at Kamehameha. And it was us and um, some other people. And she said, yeah, I remember. She's like, what are you guys doing this year? I was like, I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be That's big. Awesome. But yeah, this it, it's happening this weekend. But unfortunately, I'm not going to it because you know, I have my adult problems right now. <laughs> uh, hey, I, hey, look, well, being an adult, the adult money, it comes through. But then at the same time, you got to deal with the adult problems, man. Yeah, so, yeah. It's like, so, uh, hey, it's hey, it's always next year. And then, you know, you'll see them at future cons. And that's, oh, something, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's something, too, that I love is that, you know, just being able to go to these cons and meet you know, people who you grew up listening to, like, you know, yeah. we were just talking about Spider-Man and I would love to meet the original voice actor that was on Spider-Man the animated series. It was just, uh, I believe his name is Christopher Daniel Barnes. Yes, that is it. Okay. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like growing up, I was just like, you know, that's my Spider-Man, just like, uh, you know, Batman the animated series. And yeah, you know, Kevin, Kevin Conway. Conway. Yeah. Oh, and then, man. Now you have, uh, you know, X-Men, the animated series coming back and they're bringing yep. back the original cast, the ones that are, you know, still here uh, living on, you know, this beautiful planet that we call Earth. And mm -hmm. it's like, I'm looking forward to that, man. I'm really hyped about X-Men, the animated series. So, you know, since I'm talking about like con experiences and, you know, you meeting Mrs. Young and, you know, she remembered you and whatnot, what have been some of your favorite moments from going to cons over the years? Um... It's, it's gonna sound weird, but there was a an actress who was in The Purge. Mm. I can't think of her name. It's, it's Brittany something. And she was in her her costume from the movie. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, you look familiar. You know, you look just like the actress. And then some guy was like, yo, bro, that's her. I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, you know, I, I um. 
that, that was me. I got the, uh, the costume and I'm just running around New York Comic Con. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, oh, this is crazy. And then it happened to be, I think in 2016. Yeah. At New York Comic Con. And I was like, oh, wow. I was like, that's I, crazy. I still have to see um, the Purge. It, uh, her name is uh, Brittany Mirabelle, correct? Yes. Yes. Hey, hey, yes. That's what your boy does here, man. Um, I still need to see election year. I know that there was one that came out after election year too. Um, and did you ever watch the Purge TV show? I I watched one and then like I couldn't. I was like, uh, and I was like, and then I totally forgot about it until you mentioned yeah. it right now. And I was like, oh yeah, I was about to say that there was a TV show. It was on USA, I think it was. Yeah, USA. Um, I watched the first season. And then mm. I started watching a little bit of the second season. Hey, you know, man, I'm always name dropping. And we interviewed <laughs> Shell Ramos, who was on season two of The Purge. And oh, you can check okay. out her interview here on YouTube or on the <laughs> podcast. Hey, I'm always name dropping because, hey, I have to. So y'all go, you know, check out those uh, episodes and whatnot. But who's that cosplayer? Spidey Space. Yeah, I mean, the first season was really good. And in the second season, I like what they were doing with it. But it's just mm. one of those things where there was so much stuff on TV at the time. It's just like, you just kind of just get lost in the shuffle. And yeah. It's just like, you got to go I, back I, and watch I, stuff. I think The Flash was on and Arrow and and Gotham, I think, was on. and Ooh, Gotham. Mm, mm, mm. Man, see, man, we keep on talking. All right, hey, another name <laughs> drop. We interviewed Renes Rivera, who was on Gotham, the final season. <laughs> and his interview is on our podcast, and we have videos with him up here on YouTube. So go check those out. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but yeah, I mean, bro, there was so much stuff out, man. And uh, I, like right now, there's even more stuff out because there's more streaming apps and stuff like that, man. And Yeah, these, these streaming apps is just popping up, and it's like, oh, man, like, like now i have a theory it's you know the entertainment theory because everything you used to do was outside you used to go to movies now it's streaming yeah you know mm -hmm. and you know you have uh napster and and limewire to think you know to think about that yeah so these guys you know disney plus you're you know they're charging 12 dollars an hour for a subscription mm -hmm. and then you're dealing with netflix 12 dollars then you got you know all these other these apps and it's like geez you know I, I don't even have cable i just stream everything now yeah that's crazy it's, um i forgot to pay the cable bill because it's like you know i still love to be able to watch stuff when it's live you know sometimes i mean i also have hulu with uh you know hulu hulu live but hulu live doesn't have all the channels up there you know so oh. it was it, man i forgot to pay the cable bill and i was just watching hulu live or watching disney plus and mm -hmm. i was just like man i really need to pay the cable bill because uh what show is it um superman and lois so yeah it's like, i start I, I started to watch it and then it's then, good you know it gets it, get, it got a little boring and then i like i had stopped and then my my friend that i work with he's like Yo, have you watched this? I was like, I started it. And he's like, no, you got to get back into it. And I'm like, Bro, you have to. Yeah, I got so many things that I'm trying to catch up on. Like, I watch um, 911, um, that one, uh, the the other one that they have, I think it's South Texas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I was watching it the other night. And one of the girls that's in it um, is Ariel Kebble. She actually went to middle school and high school with me. Nice. That's yeah, awesome. so it's it's funny to see her. You know, I remember her from how, um middle school, and then you know you seen her. She was in a couple of movies, uh, Soul Plane. Um, what was the other one that she was in? Uh, John Tucker Must Die. Classic. That's a classic. Yeah. Movie right there. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's it's like it's amazing to see her. And I'm like, dude, I used to, like I used to sit next to her in in, in what was it English? Yeah, it was English class. Yeah, I always feel like it's it's cool when you see people who you grew up with and it's just like, man, like they're in this movie now or they're interviewing this person, they're on this yep. TV show. And like, I guess that's why I always say, man, treat people with respect, be humble because mm -hmm. it's like, you never know 
when you're going to run into them in life again. And then it's just like, oh, yeah, man, like I went to school with this person and now they're, they're doing stuff with Marvel now or DC. Yeah. You know, so I, yeah. I mean, I, I always treat everybody with respect and I treat everybody good. So now I wanted to ask you, because like I mentioned at the start of this interview, my friend Roroni Alley, she shared your story and it was the Say in Space pod. And when I saw that, I was just like, yo, I got to interview RV Cosmo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it's, it's dope, man. So, you know, I saw in your uh, pictures and whatnot that you had Cosplay Corp. They built it and then you purchased mm -hmm. it. So, like, what was, you know, the experience of seeing that built from the ground up and then finally getting it? I feel like that that has to be like the biggest adult collectible that <laughs> any Dragon Ball fan to have. I mean, like, if I had the Saiyan Space Pod, I would be going to sleep in that thing because it looks comfortable, man. So, like, let's <laughs> talk about that. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, one, a big, big thank you to, uh, to Joe, you know, over at Capsule Corp. He's, he's a wonderful dude. Um, three years ago, before the pandemic started, I was, um, in bed and i you know i started following because he he makes the armors mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you know i knew he had built the first one because he built two of them yeah and i was just like oh okay cool and then all of a sudden the the next story that he had was i'm selling it how much do you want or mm -hmm. make me an offer it was yeah. and even it was like it was 10 30 or 11 o'clock and i like was like let me let me see what he wants so i said hey i will be interested so he was like uh he, he responded quick too and he was like um i'm gonna give you a call tomorrow morning uh and we'll talk and i was like okay you know whatever so i talked to him and he was at first was like make me an offer and i'm like i hate when people say make me an offer yeah. and i was just like he was like i was like i don't want to lowball him because i know like i saw from the very beginning of when he started it to when he finished it and then he was touring with it and i was just like i i don't know you know the value of it and he was like well i had somebody give me twelve thousand, you know the, the price and i was like what do you want and you know, I'll tell you yes or no. Yeah. He gave me a price. And then I was like, all right, let me talk to my girlfriend. I told her, I told her the whole vision that I had. And then she's like, okay, well, if you, you know, come to agreement and have him sign the paperwork and, you know, I'll look it over. So then like literally after we talk, he hits, he, you know, he texts me. He's like, just to let you know, um, the convention wants the first one, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, dang, you know, because I was, I told him, I was like, I got the money in hand. Yeah. He was like, okay. So I was like, yeah, I got the money in hand. Like I, I'll pick it up. You know, I'll, I can give you the money and then I'll pick it up. Yeah. And like, I, I didn't, I don't know if he was like thinking I was joking around or anything, but I, like I had the money and he was like, well, I want it to be here in Texas because, you know, they have the command con. So I was like, okay, then no problem, whatever. And then like 10 minutes later, he goes, I forgot to tell you that I can build another one. I have the, you know, the, I think it was like a, a military water heater or a water filter. I can't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I can build you one. I was like, okay. He was like, I was like, what do you need, you know, for me to, to get this process started? He's like, just half of what we discussed and... So I was like, okay. And then I was like, shit, how am I going to, how am I going to give this? Like I had literally had the cash because what, what happened was my grandmother passed away and she gave me an inheritance, but it was in cash. So like she, you know, my story is like, I lived in New York for 15 years and then I moved to Florida, but she had, um, her house, uh, paid off in a long time ago and she won a couple of lawsuits so she gave her children and my my cousins money so when she passed there was a this little safe and then within the safe everybody had an envelope and they had money in it so when i got mine i was like oh okay 
sweet. I looked at it, counted. I was like, oh wow, okay. I I got I got something here. Yeah. So literally, like a month later, is when I was in on Instagram and I seen everything, and I'm like, oh, okay. So um, I had some money in the bank, so I was like, okay, I'll do this, and I I PayPal'd him, and he started working on it. Then COVID came in um, and messed up a lot of stuff for a few people. Mm -hmm. You know, me, him, and everybody else. And, you know, he stopped working on it. So I was like, well, I'm, what I do, what I work, I was just working every like six to seven days a week. So all my money was just going into my bank account. Yeah. And at the time, I didn't have a house. So I, we were renting. So it was me and my girl. And how we were paying everything was half. So everything, you know, I had the money. So I was like, well, I know how to, you know, translate, you know, where I don't have to put it in the bank. So I just paid the rent and the money that I was making from overtime was just straight into the bank. And two years later, I, I just picked it up, what, last month? Um, I was able to just give him the rest of the money and I went out there, I went out to his house and picked it up. I rented a U-Haul and I drove from Texas all the way to Florida. Nah, just 16 day. hours later. <laughs> 16 I mean, but it's, hours an awesome, later. it's an awesome ride. I mean, because you knew what you were getting, man. And like I said, I mean, I feel like everybody who grew up in the 90s and watched Dragon Ball Z, mm -hmm. like that was one thing that people were just like, man, the space, uh, the Saiyan Space Pods, like they're so cool. And, you know, to actually yeah. be in one and to, to have one yourself, man, like that's an awesome collectible, man. man. Yeah. Like, and, and, you know, it's, it's not just for a collectible. It's, it's I want to take it to cons and, you know, let everybody else experience Mm -hmm. you know getting in and taking pictures with it and and it's like and i like like next month is a uh, megacon for us uh -huh. and i'm just like dude like i'm i'm calling or sending emails to everybody at the convention like hey you know i got this and i'm like hopefully i can you know they'll be like hey okay yeah we'll be interested come on in you know uh-huh come on in hey Come on yeah, in and dope, man. That that'll be dope. I mean, because it's like you go to these conventions and you see people who will have like uh like they'll have the Ghostbusters car or they'll have the the Adam West Batmobile. And yeah. It's like you'll be there with the Saiyan Space Pod, and it's just it's cool. It's it's definitely an awesome feeling, and like you know, telling everybody the story or you know how you got it and whatnot. And yeah. It's just an awesome feeling. So like, I, hey, you get a pinky for that, man. So. I want to ask you now, when you aren't cosplaying, what are some of your hobbies that you're into? Oh man, I'm, I'm always on YouTube learning something. So I could be right now, my next hobby that I'm going to go into is 3D printing. Um, so I, what was it? 3D printing and then something else that I was looking up on. Because, you know, I got like 10 helmets and I'm like, man, you know, I could be building them myself, you know, Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, and then you don't have to wait for somebody to, to make it. And they, they taking, you know, eight months, six months, and you can do it yourself, you know, print it out, sand it, prime it, print it, or paint it. Excuse me. And that, that's one of the, the new hobbies that I'm looking into and I want to do. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, uh, I mean, even when it comes to, uh, you know, having different costumes and whatnot. If you can learn how to sew and, you know. Oh learn, yeah, that's learn. that's another thing that that I want to learn, but that, that's going to be later on. Cause I, I hear sewing is kind of hard. Tricky. It's yeah, hard, it's man. Tricky. Yeah, it's I tricky. mean, sewing and then, uh, you know, messing around with the EVA foam and, you know, I mean, it's definitely an uh, experience, but then it's just mm -hmm. like the more that you keep doing it, it's just like a video game. It's just like the podcast. It's just like the YouTube yeah. channel, you yeah. level up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, you know. especially talking about EVA, EVA. Once you start learning the, you know, how to cut exactly, and you get that muscle memory, mm -hmm. you, you could just sit there and do a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I 100 agree, man. So, final question that I have for you, and the reason why I want to ask this is because you cosplayed as both of them. Who do you like more, 
the White Ranger or the Green Ranger? Um, it's it's up there because I mean I love the White Ranger, but I also love the Green Ranger, and it's I would say the Green Ranger more. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just like when he first came on, you know, he was this badass, and you're like, oh, oh he, yeah. hey, bro, he was whooping their ass. Hey, hey, yeah, dude, dude hopped up and, in the Megan's <laughs> award. <laughs> like Jesus, and he gave him all that the hand. He's like, yo, I'm ready. Uh, man, I'm so disappointed that uh, you know, when they came out with the Power Rangers movie, I think it was like 2015, 2016, and it was oh, such- the, the one that we don't really talk about. <laughs> Bro, that movie was. I really enjoyed that movie, and then it had the uh, the the mid credit scene where it's just like it was just like, "Hey, where's Tommy Oliver?" And I was like, "Bro, like, why?" <laughs> it was a good movie. It was a good movie. I'm just I'm you, disappointed I, that I, it, I. You know what it is? It's just because we we're, we're used to the the series, yeah, and then you have the Power Rangers the movie, and then all of a sudden you got a new cast, and you're just like. Uh, I, uh, I understand that. I, yeah, I was yeah. just like when I saw it, I didn't, I didn't go to theaters, but I, I when I saw it, I was like, uh, it was all right, you know. Yeah, it was all right. It, like, it, it was more modernized. Exactly. Like it was no, uh, I, I wouldn't say it was like a perfect ten, but you know, it was it was definitely like a good seven, seven, eight mm-hmm. out of ten. I'd give it. I mean, like I enjoyed the character development and you know how. You know, they became the Power Rangers and whatnot. And, yeah. you know, it was just awesome knowing that, you know, Rita, she was originally the Green Ranger. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I thought that stuff was cool because it's like in the original show, we never get any of that. You know, we just know that she has the, uh, she has the power coin and, you know, the Green yeah, and all, you know? It's, well, the, the comics now explain it more. And it's, it's, it's weird how, you know, how she got the power coin, but she never used it. And then it, it was like, oh, okay. But, you know, it, it's, it gets real deep into it. The Boom Studios did like a really good run I on her. You know, it's like, it was like, you know, and then you got Ninja who, who made the power coin. And it's like, oh, okay. So she stole it from him. And then, you, you know, you're like, you think about it and you're like, well, it really don't add up. Yeah, no, I, I mean, and I've heard good things about the comics. I definitely would like to, you know, check them out one day. But mm-hmm. man, I just know that, you know, Tommy, he's that dude, you know, Jason David Frank. I saw that you met him as well. Now, we haven't interviewed him, so I can't plug that. But, <laughs> um, you know, it's, yeah, it's I've, just... Yeah, I've met him several times. So yeah. it's, it's it's cool to see him, you know. I, I like to go to, to these cons. And, like, now that I've, I've kind of met, like, a few of the people that I really wanted... So now I don't even go to see celebrities anymore. I just go to see other cosplayers. Yeah, it's, it, you know it's it's like a reunion, you know. And I'm, uh, and I'm exactly, glad that that's what I always back. say. <laughs> it's like a family reunion when when you go to these cons, man. Especially too because like the gym that I work out with, uh, work mm. out at. Uh, one of my cosplay buddies, he works out there too. Uh, the third Pharaoh, whose interview is here on the chat, I can say that. But, um, you know, it's just cool. Like, you know, you go to these cons and you meet so many people and then you become friends with them and whatnot, man. And it's always an awesome feeling, yo. And that's one of the things that I love about cons. Like, there's everybody goes to a con for, you know, something, like whether yeah. it's to see cosplayers, to see their favorite actors, to, you know, do cosplay photo shoots. And that's mm-hmm. why I love cosplay, man. So uh, one last thing I just wanted to tack on to, uh, you know, when we were talking about the White and Green Ranger. It's like, man, when I was a kid, and cause Tommy wasn't on the show anymore. And then when you watch that episode and you just see the White Ranger coming down <laughs> from the sky. And I was just like, yeah. yo, who, I was like, who is it? And then when he took that helmet off and I was like, yo, <laughs> it's Tommy. That moment was sweet. And then also when uh in Power Rangers Zio, when it's just like they were in the uh the command center, and then all of a sudden they was just like, We found the gold ranger, and now you see uh your boy Jason come up in there with the do rag yeah. on. I was like, <laughs> hell yeah, man. So um, with that being said, RV, thank you so much for joining me up here on a brand new Who's That Cosplayer. Before I let you go, let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at. Um, IG, RV Cosplay. Um, if you want to follow the same pod, it's uh, same pod 2.0. 
on IG. Um, that's pretty much. Oh, TikTok. Uh, I'm not with the new generation. I'm I'm old. I'm 37, and <laughs> TikTok is is a different playing field, and I'm I'm not there yet. So if you want to follow the same pod, I I have one video, but I it's same pod 2.0 as well. Hey, well look when you go to these cons and all these teenagers and kids want to get into it, then you say, hey, make sure when you post a video on TikTok, you tag my TikTok channel so that yeah, people yeah. will go. Yeah, hey, look, <laughs> hey, that's hey, it's all about networking, man. So yeah, yeah thank you again yeah, for definitely. joining me up here. Y'all yeah, already know where you, you can find me, man. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, y'all already know where y'all can find your hero Benjamin Banks at, at King Benji underscore Banks on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. I should be the first person to pop up. If not, then I need to contact Mr. Zuckerberg. Thank you everybody for watching this interview. Make sure that you check out some more of our interviews, reaction videos, reviews, check out all that good stuff. Check out our podcast where we have brand new episodes every Tuesday. The link is down below in the description and the video of that episode is up here on YouTube on Friday. So with that being said, Keep that pinky up. Stay positive. We'll see you next time on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Peace. Peace. Thanks again, everybody, for watching another episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel. Podcast, we got that too. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for further episodes and notifications. Thanks a lot to our patrons. And if you don't mind, join the Patreon. We'll be having new specials coming up soon.